title I'd actually like is business for human beings. Because I, I, I think the way we think about business now isn't fit for human beings. But if you go back a while, you think about the change in business in your career. Just the changes some of you will have seen. You have these incredible tidal forces. The wor even, I, the only way to explain globalization is to say like this, even Americans get that now. <laughs> no? Now that's not, that's not, that's not proud, but it is true. Even we get that it's a very different world. If you think about the information technology and what it's done, we've got more computing power in this room, I dare say, than existed in the world 40 years ago. Right? If you think about the change, if you think about the changes our children will, the way they will experience the world, primarily as a digital stream of zeros and ones, it undoes so much from what property is uh, to how we communicate with each other. If you think about the political discontinuities, my, uh, my son was uh, five, I think. We built an addition onto our house and put a shower curtain like, uh, like all new parents. Every moment of the day was a learning opportunity. So the shower curtain is a map of the world. It's hilarious to look at now because the number of countries that have increased is a, you know, an order of magnitude. The borders have been completely redrawn in his lifetime. The political discontinuities from the sell-off of uh, state-owned enterprise to the emergence of like post and telecom uh, and uh, uh, electricity to the emergence of state-owned inter enterprise in places like China uh, and, and, and others means the upheaval that you see in business is something I've called continuous discontinuous change. All I can predict is that I can't predict what the next one's going to be. And that means we have to think about business differently. It is, what I would like to say is, a conceptual crisis in capitalism. What do I mean by that? I mean by that the way we think about business <coughs> is no longer useful. I'm not going to debate whether it once was useful or not. That's a separate matter. I actually don't think it ever was, but, 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 but let's leave that alone. I think today we need a new story about business. And if we don't have a new story about business, there's no amount of regulatory reform, no amount of fixing up the old story is going to work. In fact, I would predict one thing. If what we do is fix up the old system, the old story about business, try to regulate more, try to get the incentives just right, we will make it worse. The problem is regulation is built on the old story, not the new one, at least in the US it is. And if we patch up a fundamentally broken uh, story about business, it won't work. I've not said profits are not important. They're extremely important. But it's not purpose. And what we've forgotten is that every entrepreneurial organization that has ever existed or amounted to anything started because somebody had a purpose. They were going to change the world or take this product to people uh, or maybe even provide for their family. I'm not saying some of those purposes didn't have money involved. But for the most part, entrepreneurs want to change the world. And that's what we've gotten. What brought you the Celtic Tiger and what will bring it back is value creation, is entrepreneurs out trying to remake the world. That's the story about business that it seems to me we have simply forgotten in our, careful of the words here, I wanted to say lust for money sometimes. We've forgotten that as we financialize everything. In today's world, if you're an iconic brand, you're held accountable for everything all the way through the value chain, from what goes into your product and service down to what people do with it. And that's a fact today. It's driven by the globalization, it's driven by information technology, it's driven by the fact that there is simply nowhere to hide. That's why seeing business as how we create value for stakeholders is a story 
who it seems to me its time has come. This, this is my favorite thing. I was talking to a guy who's a CEO of a bank, a sort of middle-sized bank in the U.S. He said, you know, we weren't, we weren't hurt by the subprime mortgage thing. He said, uh, we didn't see how lending our customers money they couldn't really afford to pay back did anybody any good. I thought, the guy's a genius. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was so simple, it was incredible. Oh, we, without that principle, we don't have, let's say, the global financial crisis. When we see capitalism as an institution that allows us to bring absolutely 100% of ourselves in an intense, engaged way into the workplace, then we, we see it as how we cooperate together to create value for each other, then it seems to me it becomes <coughs> the most powerful force on earth. Capitalism isn't on this view, in my view, the greatest system of social cooperation we have ever invented. I'm going to say that again because it sounds odd. It's the greatest system of social cooperation we've ever invented. Capitalism is how we work together to create something no one of us can create alone. Competition is important. In a free society, it gives people options. But the glue of capitalism is, in fact, the glue of creation, of value creation, of working together to do something that we can't do ourselves. And that story is a story that if we enact it, it will, I don't know how long it will take, but it will bring back our economies. It will bring back uh, the sectors of our society that have been devastated so much in the last few years. To summarize, this new story goes like this. Business is about creating value for stakeholders. Capitalism works because we're complicated, not because we're simple. Most of us are responsible people. We're capable of governing uh, ourselves. Good leaders understand their role in this process of value creation as getting, enabling other people to do great things rather than being charismatic about it. And when free people make voluntary decisions to collaborate responsibly, it seems to me society flourishes and wins. We need to make business an institution of hope. We cannot do it with the story that we have now. Thank you very much.